ethological services of the of the of the countries or by academic uh, institutions of the of the countries and we are making sure that the the, the quality of the data is uh, as high as possible and we have global standards for the for the measurements next please and here we have a carbon dioxide uh, uh, graph uh, showing that we have again broken records in in carbon dioxide uh, concentrations and and we have already exceeded the 400 ppm level which was regarded as a critical level that happened already two years ago and, and this uh, growth of uh, carbon dioxide uh, concentration continues and uh, last year's increase uh, was uh, about the same as we have been observing during the past uh, 10 years uh, as an average next please and, and the second most important greenhouse gas uh, which has contributed about 17 percent of the warming is uh, methane and, uh, and methane is very much coming from uh, from uh, 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 tropical wetlands, uh, from cattle, and, uh, and also from uh, rice, uh, rice paddies. And, um, and in, in, in case of methane, we have also been breaking records. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and the increase uh, last year was, uh, was the second highest during the past, uh, past 10 years. And, uh, and, and, and that's, that's a little bit alarming from, from our perspective. Next, please. And the third one uh, is nitrous oxide. It has contributed about 6% of the warming so far, and it's very, very much coming from, uh, from farmlands. Uh, and, um, and again, there we have been breaking, breaking records. The steady uh, growth of, uh, of uh, N2O concentration still continues. Next, please. And uh, here you can see the actual numbers, uh, how the concentrations were where last year, and in, in case of carbon dioxide, we have seen almost 150% increase uh, since the 18th century. And in case of methane, we have seen about 260% uh, increase since 18th century, and N2O about 120% increase since, uh, since, uh, uh, since uh, uh, 18th century. Next, please. And here you can see the importance, relative importance of those uh, uh, gases uh, in warming the planet, uh, how much uh, these, uh, these uh, gases are contributing to the warming of the, of the lower atmosphere and, uh, and, and also the oceans. And you can see that the, uh, relative, uh, the most important one is uh, carbon dioxide and, uh, and the relative role of carbon di dioxide has been growing since uh, uh, 1970. Uh, nine, and, um, and, and second most important is uh, methane, and then we have also a couple of uh, ozone depleting gas gases, uh, CFC-12 and uh, CFC-11, who have also contributed, and, and luckily we have been able to reduce those emissions, but their lifetimes in atmosphere are fairly, fairly long. We cannot see the major impo improvement uh, yet. Next, please. And here you can see this, uh, this uh, uh, radiative forcing uh, shares uh, coming from various uh, gases, and, and again, you can see that uh, carbon, carbon dioxide is number one, and, and methane is number two, and uh, then we have N N N2O and, and the ozone depleting gases, uh, which are also, also important, but, uh, but less important, far less important than carbon dioxide. And the negative thing with carbon dioxide is that its lifetime is very long. The lifetime of methane is uh, 12 years, and, uh, and, and uh, if we uh, let the carbon dioxide concentration to rise uh, uh, to high concentrations as, as we are already today, uh, the, the problem doesn't disappear uh, as, as soon as, for example, methane problem, which, 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 is, which is only short life, lifetime. And, and, and that's why it's very important to focus especially on, on, on carbon dioxide uh, emissions. And here you can see what has happened to uh, those gases uh, during the past 800,000 uh, Yes, and, and we have far exceeded the natural variability, which is uh, related to this so-called ice age uh, variability. And uh, during the past 100 years, we have seen something very unusual happening. Next, please. And uh, we published uh, a new status of a climate report uh, for the climate summit in New York uh, two months ago. And so far, we have seen 1.1 degree warming, and, um, and, 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 and the, it's, it's mainly coming from from the increase of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas, uh, gases. Next, please. 
and we have been storing uh, more than 90% of the extra heat that we have produced to the planet, uh, to the oceans, and, uh, and, um, and, and, and oceans have uh, warmed uh, uh, half degree so far, and, uh, and that's also contributing to the sea level rise. Next, please. And here are some figures concerning carbon budget. Uh, here you can see factors that have been leading to increase of uh, carbon, carbon in the atmosphere, and, and, and this grey area shows uh, the uh, contribution of uh, fossil sources, which have contributed about 90% of the increase, and about 10% is coming from changes in the in the land use. And uh, about go back, and about quarter of the of the uh, emitted uh, carbon. Uh, is taken by the oceans and uh, about a quarter is taken by the uh, vegetation, especially forests, and, and the rest uh, remains in the atmosphere. And you can see that uh, the part that remains in the atmosphere has been, has been growing. And this is also demonstrating if you want to uh, mitigate this problem, we have to touch this fossil carbon issue. That's oil, gas, and, and, uh, and, and coal, which are very much behind that, that part. Next, please. And uh, last year we have seen emission growth uh, continued. Uh, it has been growing uh, for the past two years, and, uh, and the estimate for, 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 for last year was 2.1% uh, increase. So despite the Paris Agreement, uh, uh, the emissions are still, still growing. Next, please. And here you can see from which countries the emissions are coming from. Classically, it used to be Europe and, uh, and, uh, and, and North America. USA, but uh, China has become number one emitter, but there has been also fairly strong growth uh, in the emissions of uh, non-OECD countries. And this is demonstrating that if we want to solve this problem, we have to have global, global efforts. Uh, European Union nor USA cannot solve it alone, nor China. We have to have all of the countries on board. Next, please. And here is an estimation of uh, International Energy Agency, what has been happening to the global energy demand. And uh, last year we, we were comforting the, the growth of uh, energy demand uh, mainly based on fossil, fossil sources. It was gas, uh, even coal was uh, used more last year as compared to the previous uh, years, and, uh, and also oil consumption is still growing. And, and out of these atmospheric friendly sources of energy, uh, there has been growth in renewables and uh, very slight increase in the, in, in the contribution of nuclear energy. Next, please. And, uh, and there was this IPCC 1.5 degree report published a year ago, and if you would like to reach the 1.5 degrees, uh, we should turn the growth of emissions uh, to a downward path in the coming five years, and to reach two degrees, we have 15 years time to do, do so. And if, if we don't do anything, we could reach three to five degrees warming by the end of this century. Next, please. And finally, a couple of slides uh, showing the challenge that we have ahead if we want to mitigate uh, climate change. Uh, at the moment, we produce 85% of the global energy based on fossil ones, coal, oil, and, and gas, which are shown here, and only 15% based on nuclear, hydro, and uh, renewables. And, and uh, to be successful in implementation of the Paris Agreement, we should revert those numbers in the coming, coming dec decades to st pro start producing most of our energy based on nuclear, hydro and uh, renewables. Next, please. And this is a scenario of uh, European Union, how to become carbon neutral by 2050. They are just debating uh, whether, whether the European Union would agree such a, such a path. And, uh, and here you can see the, the, the magnitude of various components. It's, uh, it's mainly energy production, uh, transport and industry, where we have the biggest uh, numbers, and, and to be successful in, in climate mitigation, we have to touch uh, those sectors. And, uh, and by, if we reduce 90% of the emission by 2050, at, and, and to become carbon neutral, we should uh, uh, take uh, carbon from the atmosphere to growing forests and, and farmlands, uh, which is the dust area here. So I think that, that was all, all I had in in mind, and, uh, and I have also uh, our uh, greenhouse gas expert, Oksana Tarasova. Uh, Dr. Tarasova is running our Global Atmosphere Watch uh, activities of, uh, of WMO, and uh, she's also available for, for interviews. Thank you. Thank you. And just to add, um, obviously, tomorrow morning, um, the UN Environment 
will be issuing its emissions gap report. So in that report, there is much, much more information on, on emissions um, and the gaps between those emissions and the, and the Paris Agreement uh, targets. Um, and Professor Talas is on the podium again tomorrow um, for, the, for the UN Environment Report. Oksana, do you want to add anything, or should we go straight to questions? Okay. And if you could just introduce yourself with your name and affiliation, thank you. Uh, Assis Moreira, Valor Econômico de Brazilian Economic Newspaper. Please, uh, could you explain a little bit uh, the connection between the increase of the, uh, the gases and the deforestation and the uh, use of land, the change of the use of land? Yeah, so, so as I said, uh, uh, it's actually 12% of the increase of carbon dioxide is uh, based on the deforestation or, or change in the, in, in the land use, but it's, it's mainly deforestation. And uh, in the deforestation, the main uh, challenge globally is uh, are the tropical, trop tropical uh, rainforests which are not uh, renewable. So it would be very important uh, for, for, the, for the carbon budget to reduce the, the loss of uh, rainforest uh, ecosystems. The second problem that we have in the, in the forest sector are the forest fires, and uh, we have seen fairly severe forest fires in Northern Hemisphere uh, last year in, in, in Canada, for example, and, and Scandinavia, and, uh, and, and, and this year in Eastern, Eastern Siberia, and, and we get fairly high emissions from those. But the difference between the tropical uh, rainforests and, uh, and, and the boreal forests is that the boreal forests are renewable, so, so they, they will grow again and, uh, and take the carbon from the atmosphere, but that's not the case in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the tropical forests. And uh, in your home country and Indonesia, for example, that's a, that's a challenge. Uh, yes, good morning. Jan Habermann, uh, writing for various German language media. I'd like to ask you on the upcoming uh, World Climate Conference in Madrid. Uh, my first question would be a general one. What do you expect uh, from the um, Madrid conference? And secondly, you've uh, mentioned the EU already. Uh, uh, must the EU play a special a key role um, at Madrid and in future to, uh, in order to... Um, achieve the goals you have uh, mentioned in, in the press conference and earlier. Thanks. Yeah, so, uh, so in Madrid uh, we are supposed to promote uh, the implementation of the Paris, uh, Paris Agreement and, and the key meeting for, for the success of Paris Agreement will be COP26 next year, uh, which is going to be hosted by the UK government in, in, in Glasgow. And, and, and Madrid is, uh, is, is, a, is a pathway towards that uh, that meeting. And in the UN system, we have started paying uh, glow, growing attention to climate as a, as, as a major challenge of, uh, of this uh, century for the welfare of, uh, of mankind. And uh, that's why also uh, Secretary General Guterres uh, hosted the Climate Action Summit in New York uh, two months ago. And, and the whole, whole enterprise is, uh, is, is, is targeting at the COP26 uh, next year in, in Glasgow. So that's, that's the ultimate goal. And in the case of the uh, European Union, uh, there has been discussions uh, going on to become carbon neutral by 2050, and, and that's not uh, decided uh, yet, but the uh, large majority, majority of the European Union countries are ready to, to commit themselves to such a, such a target. And, uh, and, um, and so far, Europe, Europe has been the driver of uh, of uh, climate mitigation efforts uh, worldwide. And, uh, and, and there's also economic uh, incentive for that. Uh, European Union countries are spending 260 billion uh, euros a year by buying fossil energy for outside of the European Union. So there's, uh, there's also such, uh, such trade uh, interest uh, behind uh, uh, this, uh, this effort. Can I comment? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I also would like to add that uh, we are working in World Meteorological Organization to provide the tools to the countries so that they can have very wise mitigation options. The observations which you've seen we use for the calculation of global averages, we also use those observations to do the mapping 
of the emissions. So we use like analysis of those data and they help us to understand where we are emission-wise. And we also can use those observation and analysis to advise the countries where are the most economically efficient actions on the mitigation side, just provide a guidance using the same approaches as we use in the bulletin. Also, one issue that uh, may be interesting for the Madrid is that uh, there's uh, growing interest to get uh, uh, at the national level a uh, wider amount of ministries on board uh, this COP uh, process. It has been uh, uh, run by the ministries and ministers for environment at the country level, and, um, and, and there was an initiative uh, to get also the ministers for finance and ministries for finance uh, on board, and, um, and, and there are also other ministries at the countries uh, which are playing a key role in, in climate mitigation, transport, uh, trade and industry type of ministries too, and, and, and that's one of the desires on the UN side uh, to get this wider, wider participation from the, from the, at the country level to, to support the implementation of the, 